So you're about to start clerkships and you're wondering how to study for your shelf exams, which are one of the biggest components factored into your overall grade when trying to honor a clerkship. For those new here, my name is Alex Saw. I'm a fourth year medical student applying for residency this cycle. And I just wanna share some of my favorite resources that I used when studying for shelf exams. So today I'm gonna to show you eight of my favorite resources with my last being my favorite. Let's jump right in. First off, UWorld. So UWorld is great because it shows you a whole bunch of board style questions that may appear on the actual exam, as well as giving you a little bit more high yield content that you should focus on for examination purposes. So I went through and I created this guide, kind of giving you a week by week outline on how you should be studying these resources. For my rotations, they were broken up into eight blocks, but generally you want to get through all of your UWorld questions by about the halfway point so that you can go and review other content or you can redo your incorrect URL questions afterwards. The best way to approach this is by figuring out how many questions you have to finish over the entire block and dividing it by the amount of days in which you wanna finish all the questions. This kind of gives you a ballpark estimate of how many questions you should do per day. When you finish all these questions, either you can do all your incorrects or we can move on to my second favorite resource, AMBOSS. AMBOSS is another great board style question bank in which that you can practice and see a lot of high yield content. You can either use AMBOSS completely throughout the block in substitution for UWorld or you can also purchase it in addition to UWorld to get a little bit more uh, breadth of questions. They also have a very easy way to search different concepts that you may find a little bit challenging and this comes very handy during your actual clerkships because sometimes your attendings ask you to look up specific pathologies and present it and AMBOSS is just a great centralized location where you can learn up on every single type of pathology. So after you're done with all of your question picks, either UWorld or AMBOSS, the next best step that you should do is practice your clinical science mastery self-assessment forms, also known as CMS forms, but I like calling them practice shelf tests. So if you go into the description below, you'll see a link to one of the spreadsheets that has not only the schedule, but also it has the CMS forms for each block that you can fill out so that you can see your growth throughout the block. If you check out my step two video, you can see that I inputted these scores as well as another medical student who completed each of the CMS forms. And it's just a great way to kind of document your growth throughout the block. So the fourth resource is Divine Intervention Podcast. I really wish that I discovered this resource a little bit earlier because when I start implementing his podcast and starting to listen to them throughout the block, I started scoring a little bit better and understanding the content a lot more. So Divine Intervention has a photographic memory and he's able to pick out the clinically relevant topics that he's seen test questions on um, so that you can hone in your studying a little bit more effectively. So I painstakingly went through all of his highest yield podcasts and color coded them so that for each discipline, you can listen to the, um, the discipline specific podcast. He's a great resource because you can kind of listen to him passively or actively if you want. Um, when you're driving long distances, I had away rotations at different off-campus sites. So I was driving quite a bit. You can listen to him while you're working out or washing the dishes or just doing chores. So you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. I do want to mention though that a lot of the podcasts are highlighted yellow for the internal medicine blocks and that's because internal medicine kind of has an overall graph over the other disciplines. So just keep that in mind when you're going through all of the, all of the podcasts. So if you don't have time to listen to Divine Intervention and you feel like it's a little bit too comprehensive and you want an overall summary of the rotation, then you can go through these other third party resources that are free on YouTube and that's Dr. High Yield and Emma Holiday, who are just great at putting together review videos. I've linked them in the spreadsheet right here, but I recommend you listen to them at the beginning of the block just to kind of give you an overall view of what you're about to kind of learn with that mountain of knowledge for the discipline, as well as listening to them at the last two weeks or 48 hours before your actual exam, because it's a great way to make sure that you just filled in all the holes and covered all the content throughout the rotation. So Anki, Ong King never goes away, even throughout clerkships. Um, so it is a very great resource because during clerkships, oftentimes you're just trying to study as much as you can. And you just have a whole bunch of duties in between. And you just want to study something in between tasks. Well, Anki is the greatest way of doing that. So what you can do is you can go to the Anki and then go to exclamation point shelf and then unsuspend the cards. You want to click the ones that's no dupes because you'll see that there's a lot of overlap with between a lot of the cards between all the different resources that I'm explaining today. Some of the rotations are a little bit more manageable in completing all the Anki cards, but some rotations like neurology and internal medicine, they just have like 4,000 plus cards, a little bit too overabundant. 
So I don't want you guys stressing out too much about not completing all the Anki cards. Just do what is manageable, and I think it's a very good passive way of learning when you're, you're in between tasks throughout the day in the clerkships. So if you have a little bit of extra dough to spend, or if you have some extra connections to some upperclassmen, then a resource that I didn't personally use, so I can't speak upon too much, is Online Med Ed. I heard that it's a very just comprehensive overview in a centralized location where you can review a whole bunch of videos for each discipline. And some people swear by it, but I personally thought that Divine Intervention was comprehensive enough as well as doing UWorld and Emma Holiday and Dr. High Yield. So I wouldn't think it's completely necessary, but I do know some people decide to use online med ed. Perhaps the most important resource are the attendings and residents because it is their job to understand this knowledge and it is their job to teach you. There are some concepts that are just a little bit too complex and just aren't covered very well in the third party resources. So it's a great way to you know, connect with your attendings a little bit more and an opportunity for them to explain these concepts to you. And for me at least, I have things stick in my brain a little bit better when something someone explains something to me or draws a picture uh, right in front of my face. It's just a little bit more of that dynamic learning because a lot of preclinicals is just remote, virtual, doing third-party resources. So during clerkship, it's a great way to learn from you know your attendings firsthand. I do want to mention one more thing. I think there is a lot of value of just being present inside of the hospital and interacting with the patients and seeing specific pathologies. Um, I find it that specific patients with interesting pathologies just stick into my brain forever. And just by learning about how the treatment plans are, as well as learning about the pathophysiology of their, of their um, condition, really makes it stick in my brain. And when I'm answering these board style questions, I picture this patient in my mind and I find it that just being in the hospital and having that slumdog millionaire effect of being at the right place at the right time can help you along the ways uh, for answering these questions. So hopefully this video sets you up well to crush your shelf exams, which I have no doubt you guys are gonna do amazing. If you want a more comprehensive review on how I tackled all this information right before my board exam, be sure to watch my How to Crush Step 2 video right here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch the next one.